Hello guys, my name is Pedro. Wait, let me take my glasses off, otherwise you'll see Shrek. And you don't want to see Shrek. I mean, you don't want to see Shrek. <laughs> like, <laughs> this god is so hot. Okay, anyway, today we are going to talk about something very, very important. It is anxiety and procrastination. I'll give you some tips uh, from my personal experience on procrastination and anxiety, how I dealt with it and how I pretty much changed my life. My life. How I changed my life. Yeah! Woohoo! But first, I'm gonna say why it is so important to deal with anxiety. Since I remember, I've dealt with anxiety. Like, severe anxiety. Even today, I deal with it a lot, like, a lot, but still, it's much less than it was before, but still it's a lot, <laughs> but it's much, okay, anyway, um, anxiety not only affects your mental health by changing your mentality and enabling you to do something you really have to or want to or need to, it also affects your body itself, it causes us to sweat, feel dizzy, uh, sometimes you can have intestine problems, like belly hurts so much. <laughs> Anxiety will make us afraid of studying, um, working out, doing certain assignment or working in a certain project, um, and it causes us to procrastinate everything, or even not do it at all. It's something very bad. In the worst cases, and it also happened to me, uh, I would completely freeze. Like during a math test, it happened so many times. I would simply not know what to do. I, like, what is one plus one? I don't know. I just couldn't. And if you end up freezing, like during a job interview or during an important exam, um, it will enable you to be successful. So anxiety can change your life a lot. So now is the part you've been waiting for. How to deal with it? First, I'll talk about something that is very important and very underrated. That is breathing. Yes, breathing. Everyone can breathe, right? No, there's actually a right way to breathe. You should always, always breathe from your nose. Um, mouth, mouth is only for eating, okay? Breathe, nose. Mouth, eating. I don't have here anything to eat, so I can demonstrate you how to eat. Okay, that's not important. Uh, your tongue must be uh, like on top of your mouth um, but in such a way you can still breathe and your jaw like this also a bonus is like mewing if you know what it, mewing is um, if you don't know what mewing is um, it's a breathing exercise that make you become with a Define jawline like so sexy man. Oh, yeah <laughs> Okay, but what does breathing affect our anxiety if you breathe from your mouth And if you're nervous, it's much easier to hyperventilate like you <laughs> And then yeah, it's over you freeze everything you're doing forget it if you breathe from your nose, it's much, much easier to calm yourself. It's what I did before I did before I recorded this video because I'm very, very nervous. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> why, why am I so stupid? Okay, there's also lots of videos uh, in YouTube by professional people that um, can guide you into knowing how to breathe and calm yourself, like meditation. I'll put a link in the description with an example. Next one, it's the most important thing on this list. And it's 
the one thing I've been doing and it helps me a lot. It's a game changer. It's to-do lists. I use to-do lists for literally everything. Like if I have to prepare something for my school, I'll do it, write the list. If I have to some chores in the house, um, some ideas for a video, how to record a video, etc. But there's actually like two types of to-do lists. One is more like a general one, you know? What I have to do today. It's the day to-do list, you know? Where you write, for example, make the bed, uh, wash the dishes, study math, write an essay, imagine. And then there's another type that is like a more specific one. For example, study math is still something very, very abroad. Like, <laughs> where do I even start? Uh, the list will not really help you if you only have there written study math. It's, it's going to be overwhelming either way. So what do, what do you do? You grab your book, your school book or um, your notebook and uh, you start writing everything that goes in your test or everything you learn that might go in your test in a list and then you go one by one see if you and then you study each one and then you well you probably succeed much easily because it will prevent you from procrastination because well you already know how to do and it's some very simple effective tasks it's very important only do simple tasks not like small tasks precise small you have to make sure you know what to do Okay guys, now I'm going to give you a technique that can really help you with your procrastination. It's the two minute rule. Like, imagine you do your to-do list, everything is written there, everything perfectly, but you still don't do anything. Well, there's this rule, the two minute rule, where everything that takes less than two minutes, you do, just do, it takes less than two minutes. Like making your bed takes less than two minutes. Uh, start doing exercise X takes less than two minutes. And if you do little tasks that do less, that take less than two minutes, you you're gonna make lots of tasks and your procrastination is gonna be almost eliminated. But even if you cannot do this, there's another technique. It's very stupid, it sounds very stupid, but it's actually very simple and very effective. Um, it's a 1-2-3 technique or 3 to one technique, whatever you, you, you call it. Uh, so it's like, before I do something, imagine washing the dishes or cleaning your home, um, you're gonna s say like 1-2-3 and then on the 3 or in the 1 if you... <laughs> you go, simply. Like, it's simple. Um, it sounds stupid, yes, but it's much easier to uh, count to one than to wash the dishes or clean your whole house or anything. So, since it's easier to count, uh, to count, you just do it and then start. Like, just do it. If you're homeless, just buy a house. Like, <laughs> bro. <laughs> now, this tip is specifically uh, for when you're going to do like a job interview or an exam it's to remind yourself of the success you had imagine you're very nervous because you don't know if you're going to be able to ace that math test that you really really have to so you become nervous and anxiety takes over your, over you and then bam you get Terrible, great. So, what you should do before a test or a job interview, that's really what I'm reminding myself. I need to search some better examples. But okay, before a test, you should 
remind yourself of the success you had. Like, um, if you math, math, okay, you've done lots of math exercises and you've done well in most of them. You knew how to easily do each exercise. So you think about it. If you could do that at home, you can do this in a test too. Like, it's simple. It gives you much more confidence and anxiety starts to going away. But if you noticed you had to make exercise to have a good success, you're not going to be able to be good on a test or job interview without preparation and the, your anxiety will not be diminished if you do not prepare yourself. It's very important to prepare yourself. It's, it's really the most important thing. If you prepare yourself and if you train and do lots of practice, you're going to do it. You, if you've done it lots, lots of times, you are going to do it. So yes, guys, this is pretty much the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I, and I really, really hope that I could help you. And see you next time. Ciao! Boop, boop.